Okay, so we're in chapter 5, section 4, and we're going to be talking about the ideal gas law, but before we do, I wanted to go back and remind you what Boyle's law was. Boyle's law, we found that with Boyle's law, uh, volume was reciprocally, reciprocally related to pressure, and so we could say that PV is equal to some constant, K, and then we could use that to, to, to consider initial and final situations where that something doesn't change, right? A constant P1V1 is equal to P2V2, and that was Boyle's law, okay? And with Charles' law, we said something similar. We said volume was, was uh, directly proportional to temperature, okay? And so we could say V over T was, was also constant, let's say some other constant, and we could take care of the, we could utilize it like sort of the initial final, right? So that's constant, then V over T is not going to change either. The relationship's not going to change. So we could say V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, right? And that was Avogadro's law. And then, I'm sorry, that was Charles' law. And then with Avogadro's law, we said that volume was reciprocally related to no, no, it's directly related to moles, right? And so we could say N over V is equal to N2 over V2, using a similar uh, reasoning to that. Okay, so this was Avogadro's law. And we, if you have a situation where nothing changes except it, um, the number of moles and the, number, and the volume, you just want to use this. If you have a situation where nothing changes except volume and temperature, you want to use that. Boyle's law, if only pressure and volume are changing, you want to use Boyle's law, right? So, but we're going to get some situations in which uh, more than that changes, right? Multiple things change. So, there's a graphic in your textbook on page 186, which shows that this is, the, that the ideal gas law can be distilled down to any of these other laws, right? I hate the way the spelling is. I don't know if you notice that, but I'm, I don't. If this is like improper spelling. You don't put two s's in a row. Okay. So where this is some constant, if these aren't changing, that's the whole thing is a constant, right? And if if these aren't changing, then it's the same thing as saying volume is equal to some constant. I was saying K two times T, right? And if these aren't changing, you could say volume is equal to K three times N. Right? Remember that? Volume is equal to K1 over P. Okay? So either way, you can see that, that the ideal gas law is sort of the culmination of all of these uh, together. And I would say that if I'm, if I'm having a bad day um, and I don't remember Boyle's law, Charles' law, or Avogadro's law, or the, the Gay-Lussac law, I'm, I'm simply going to use the ideal gas law. Right? PV is equal to NRT. The only the, the the hard thing is, of course, that we have to be able to interpret what's what's the pressure in any particular problem, or what's the volume, or what's the temperature. So anyway, I would say for the most part, you're going to find some of these be very easy. Okay, I have to tell a little girl here not to mess up with the book because I'm going to need it. All right, so does that make sense? My little daughter's here with me. So, all right. Uh, let me, I think it's time to do a practice problem. So calculate the volume occupied by 0.845 moles. So let me get my pen out here. Moles is equal to 0 0.845 moles. Pardon my writing. You know what? That's just too messy. 845 moles of nitrogen gas at a pressure Watch this, 1.37, I see gas here, by the way, right, so I'm thinking, aha, right, if it's a gas, my, my mind immediately goes to PV is equal to another T, right, at a pressure of 1.37 atmospheres, and a temperature of 315 kelvins, okay, something I should have said in the previous, uh, slide was, I know what R is, right? R is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So, 
This is in atmospheres, that's in atmospheres. Check, check. This is in kelvins, that's in kelvins. This is in moles, this is in moles. And I'm probably going to be asked the volume. Oh yeah, calculate the volume, right? Because that's what I didn't check off. So if PV is equal to nRT, then V is equal to nRT over P, which is equal to 0 0.845 moles. 0.08206. We grab here from old Kelvin. Oops, temperature's on top here. Didn't leave myself enough room for it. Can I just put it right here? 315 Kelvins divided by pressure, which is 1.37 atmospheres. Okay, so let's make sure everything crosses off here. Moles cross off with moles. Kelvins cross off with Kelvins. Atmospheres crosses off with that, and I'm left with liters, which is exactly what I wanted, okay? So whatever it is, it's liters. The volume is going to be that. Let me get my calculator out here. Oh, this little girl is dying to press the buttons on the calculator. 0 0.845 times, honey, I can't let you, baby. I, I got, I got, uh, if I get this wrong, oh, 0 0.08206 times 315 divided by 1.37. Be very frustrating for the students if I get this wrong. 15.943, 15.943 liters, okay? Now I had three sig figs here, three sig figs here, three sig figs here, four sig figs here, so this is gonna be three sig figs, right? So my volume is going to be um, 3 sig figs, 15.9 liters. And you know what? I don't really have any way, good way of evaluating if this makes sense or not. Um, I just, uh, you know, a lot of times you, you want to stop and say to yourself, does this make sense? I guess what if, if, if the pressure was on, I would probably recalculate this and do it a, do it a second time. Um, but... Uh, the pressure's not on right now. So let's assume that that's right. I was pretty careful when I set that up. Let's move on to the next problem. I think this is the last problem. So yeah, calculate the total number of, calculate the number of moles of gas. So I'm looking for moles. It's gas, so it's probably PV is equal to NRT, oh, plus it says ideal gas law, right? Inflated to a total pressure of 24 PSI. All right, so I'm not sure what that means. But pressure, 24.3 PSI at 25 degrees Celsius. Temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. Um, oh, I didn't get the volume there. The volume is 3.24 liters, 3.24 liters. Now, my R that I know is 0.08206 Liter atmospheres per mole cavern. Thank you. So I, this is not in, in um, atmospheres. So I got to change it to atmospheres. Okay. PSI to atmospheres. That'll give me atmospheres. And this is in um, not in kelvins, right? So I have to add this to this to seventy three, right? 273, and so that's going to give me, I can do that one in my head, 298 Kelvin, and this one I can't. Uh, one atmosphere, I'm going to have to look this up, I'm pretty sure it's 14.7 PSI, but I'm going to look it up real quickly here, 14.7 PSI. Yep, one atmosphere is 14.7 PSI. So I've got to calculate that. 24, I've got a little girl here who's typing away. 24.3 divided by 14.7 is 1.653. I'm just going to use four sig figs. 1.653, because I'm limited to three here, right? 
and that's three. So ultimately, this is going to be three two. I'm just going to put that extra digit there for extra for extra caution. This is now three sig figs, even though I had two here, but uh, added that three sig figs, and this is three sig figs, right? So this is liters, atmospheres, and kelvins. So I'm going to have, and I'm I'm looking for moles here. So this is the right. This one I'm looking for. So I know P V is equal to N R T. Oh, let me read this note here. Um, the total pressure is not the same as the pressure read on the type of pressure gauge used for checking a car or bicycle tire. That pressure is called the gauge pressure. That's the difference between the total pressure and the atmospheric pressure. Okay. In this case, if atmospheric pressure is 14.7, the gauge pressure will be 9.6. However, for calculations, you must use the total pressure. Okay, good. So we did use the right pressure. And we're looking for, for moles, okay? So my moles then... It looks like my moles is going to be PV over RT. And my pressure is 1.653 atmospheres. Didn't leave myself in a room again. Uh, and volume is 3.25 liters. R is 0 0.08206. liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin, and the temperature was 298, which is, I should have expected that, right? Because that's basically room temperature. And you're you're probably not going to be uh, pumping up a basketball in a sauna or, on a, you know, in a, in a, a frozen um, day in the tundra. Yeah, please. Thank you. Okay, so 1.653. Let's cancel everything out here. It looks like atmospheres cancel, liters cancel. Kelvin's cancel, and I've got moles in the denominator of my denominator, so it's going to go up to the numerator. And I was asking, you calculate the number of moles, so yeah, this is going to give us our correct answer. So I've got 1.653 times 3.24 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298. And that's going to give me 0 0.219. 0 0.2190 oh, moles. But remember, I was using three sig figs for all these, so we're going to have three sig figs for this as well. So my answer is going to be about 0 0.219 moles of gas that's in the basketball. Okay, and there it is.